Hello everyone, how are you today? Alright, happy Friday! It's the 6th of March 2020 on Friday. So how are you today? I hope you're having a great day and you are ready for this weekend. Okay, so let's talk about some charts. And like I said yesterday and the day before, I will be talking about Euro Dollar, Euro USD first as I keep talking every day with this template of Ichimoku and Bollier Bands. And after that, I will talk about other currency pairs if there is time. And I will show you another um, setups of uh, what I usually use in uh, Forex trading. So first I will talk about Euro Dollar with Ichimoku and Bollier Bands. And in this Bollinger Band, this is Deviation 2, right? I am only showing Deviation 2 because this is the most important deviation in Bollinger Band. And that's why I, I only show this one, right? And the period is 20. So in the middle, it's 20 SMA. And on each side, there is there are uh, Deviation 2 here. All right, so let's get started right now. Let me... Drink a cup of water here first. All right, and I will again show you the uh, the template. So as for the template, I am still creating the template right now uh, for you to be able to use it in your day-to-day -day analysis. And for now, uh, let me just show it to you. This is the template I can follow. So usually I look at three time frames, right? I divide these time frames into three categories. And one is, hold on, let's see. All right, so one is um, big time frame as a major trend. So I look at the weekly chart and daily chart and capture the major trend, right? Major trend. And for the confirmations of that major trend direction, I take 4 hour or 1 hour chart as for the confirmations. And then when it comes to taking trades, I usually look at 5 minute or 15 minute chart for execution. So basically again, I divide these time frames into three categories. One is for major trend and one is for confirmation of that trend and also finally uh, the time frames to execute trades, which are 15 and 5. Alright, so how are you? <laughs> how are you doing? I hope you're having a great day today. I thought, uh, yeah, maybe you are at work, you are uh, having a day off today, or you're doing something else while I'm, you're watching my live today. But depending on whatever you do, I hope you're having a great day today. All right, so let me show your chat so that you know who's here and who's talking what in my life today. All right, so let's see. So Euro Dollar, right? It's actually going up, right? Euro Dollar is going up right now, and it has been a quite strong bullish momentum. So just to catch up here, right? Um, just to catch up this Euro Dollar pair. Um, yesterday I was looking at the one hour chart, and I was expecting the price to be looking like this, looking like the head and shoulders. And I was expecting the market to be going down this way, right? Breaking the recent low downwards. And that was my expectation here because it turned out that it broke the recent high, right? Even the recent high upwards this way. And it keeps going up right now. So today I switched my mind for bullishness and I will be looking for the buy in this case. So this is where we have to be flexible, right? I said uh, when 
the market actually creates the head and shoulders and if it goes down then it should be a sell right but because it broke the recent low right recent high uppers right now this is the bullish momentum right now right kumo itself has been moving up like this and the price is actually spiking up right now so yeah in this case we have to look for buy right we have to look for buy um, today I was pretty busy I was outside and I was doing one-on-one -on -one, uh, mentoring and also I was reading some books and preparing for uh, other things and also I was practicing violin so yeah I had I was actually doing other things and that's why um, yeah I didn't really take in, I'm not really taking trades plus this is Friday and we have a non-farm payroll in the US right we just had it like uh, 30 minutes ago and that's why I was kind of staying away from this chart so yeah right now it's going up so I am again looking for the buy chance right now all right so let's see So yeah, it's been quite a strong bullish momentum right now. Excuse me. All right, so let's see who's here. And uh, let's see. Hi, Min. Thank you for joining. All right. And Andrew, good to see you again. Good to see you. And uh, uh, Michael, thank you for joining. All right. And Bolgan, good to see you again. And Son, nice to see you again too. All right, Alex, thanks for joining again. All right. Happy Friday. Yes, happy Friday. Very volatile week indeed. Yes, this week was quite, quite volatile. Yep. Uh, Christoph, thank you for joining. All right. And Bartos, thank you for joining. All right. Happy for those who are long on your daughter this week. Exactly. It's been spiking up right now. Yep. Hi, Maru-san. Thank you for joining as well. And Matuwe-san too, thank you for joining. All right. And K17, all right. What do you think about, uh, what do you think made BNF and other Japanese elite traders so good? Uh, what do you think did they different from uh, to reach such a level? Um, yeah, that's a deep question. <laughs> yeah, like I said on the video about BNF, uh, I think he is good at uh, capturing the pushback and pullbacks. And also he, he's got no emotions when he was trading and that's why he was keep winning. And so yeah, you can be emotional, right? Whenever you take positions and whenever it goes backwards, you get emotional, right? And because you are losing. But uh, you can think that this is like a game, right? Like a monopoly, right? And you can actually be objective to the market and you have to have like less emotion uh, when you take trades, even if it lost, right? Even if you lose, um, you have to be calm, uh, and you have to. It those like movements have to be included within your scenarios. So, if you're prepared for it, then you should be good. And I think that's what made uh, BNF as a good trader. To answer your question, K70. Yeah, K70, I think you have uh, lots of questions, right? <laughs> because you always start from the question. So, yeah, I know you're curious about uh, the traders and also the market. Yeah. Hi, Agas. Thank you for joining. All right. How about gold today, K-san? Um, yeah, I haven't looked at the gold right now, but yeah, I might take a look at it later. All right. Hi, Mateus. Oh, there's another Mateus san <laughs> Thank you for joining. All right. And Wasan. Good to see you. All right, euro below everything out of the water this week. Yeah, well, actually, it's spiking up. So, um, yeah, yeah, this is uh, this is something that I've never expected. Actually, actually, I was expecting, like I said, that it's gonna go down this way, but now it's going up. So, yeah, it's quite strong bullishness. Hi, Bezad. Thank you for joining. All right, and Jeroen. Good to see you. Good to see you again. And uh, yeah, Karine, thank you for joining too. All right, Dewey, good to see you again. All right, all right. 
And Abner, thank you for joining again too. All right, can you say something about span A? Um, yeah, span A is actually the uh, the long to mid term market momentum. So span A actually takes the uh, mid price of uh, of this uh, yeah Tenkan-sen Kijun-sen. So actually, span A is very important. All right, so I will give you um, one tip about span A today, right? Whenever you see the Kumo shrinking down, span A is very important. So, um, yeah, let's see. When you look back the chart like this way, right? Uh, when you look back the chart, um, and whenever you see the market is going up like this way, whenever you see the Kumo itself is going up, you might focus on this single span B always, right? You might always look at this single span B, and whenever it's horizontal, this is consolidation, like I said, and whenever it's moving up, this is uptrend, like I have been saying, right? So single span B is very important uh, in terms of capturing the long-term market trend and its direction. And also single span A is also important, especially when it goes backwards, right? Especially when it goes backwards like this way. Um, because most likely this is when the market is getting ready for the retracement or getting ready for that twist to the downside. So as long as you see the single span A is moving up, uh, you can be still positive uh, to to the bullishness. But when you see single span A, in this case, right, in this up Kumo, whenever you see single span A is moving down this way, this is when you see that it's going to be a retracement, right? And it might twist it to the downside whenever you see single span A moving down this way, while single span B is flat. So here too, right? Single span B was flat, and while single span B becomes flat, sometimes single span A goes backwards, right? Goes down. And if it keeps going down this way, then it will shrink, right? It will make the Kumo itself to be shrink down, and it's gonna twist anytime soon, right? So when you think about it, when you think about it, um, usually when Kumo twists, and right before the Kumo twists, um, not only the single span B, but also single span A gets closer to single span B. And this is when you can be ready for the Kumo twist here, right? And so in this case, the Kumo twist shows that this is the end of the bull trend. Right, this is the end of the bull trend, and you cannot really buy after the twist here. So, yeah, that's very important to know. So, single span A shows the market momentum also because this is another honey line here. And whenever you see single span B to be flat, you have to look at the single span A's direction too, right? So here's another tip here, right? So single span B is flat. When you look at this single span A direction, it's moving down, right? In this case, it's moving down. So the retracement is going to be very strong in this case, while single span B is flat. So let's talk about this one, right? Let's talk about this single span A today. So right now, as you look at it, right? As you look at the market right now, after the Kumo twist, the Kumo itself has been going up this way, right? It's going up this way, and you see single span B is moving up right now. And also, Kijun Sen is moving up too. So basically, this is uptrend, right? This is up, strong uptrend, so we can still look for the buy chance in this case. And also, when you look at the, the single span A, it's moving up too, right? It's moving up too. So in this case, this is quite strong bullish trend, right? But um, when you see single span B becomes flat, and when you see single span A to be going backwards like this way, that's when you see the market is losing the bullishness, right? 
so that you can actually prepare for the Kumo twist, right? Eventually, and the market is gonna lose the bullish, the bullish power, right? So yeah, let's even look back the past chart and see how it's been played out, playing out. So um, yeah, like this one too. So first, uh, first, whenever you see Kumo is moving down, this is a quite strong bearish trend, right? You know that this is a bearish trend because Kumo has been moving down. And sometimes Kumo becomes flat, right? Senko span B becomes flat, right? Like this way. And so let me just take out where they have been flat. So from here to here, it was flat. And also from here to here, it was flat, right? Um, we are only looking at the Senko span B, the upper part of the Kumo, where it becomes flat. Right, and whenever you see the Kumo Senko Span B is flat, that means that the market is consolidating, right? So let's just take these examples, and I will just add one more. Uh, yeah, probably this one right here. Yeah, so in these cases, right, uh, Kumo Senko Span B has been flat in these points, right? So this one Senko Span B flat, and this one was flat too. And right here was flat, and this one is flat too, and right here too, it was flat, right? So when you see this Senko Span B to be flat, look at how Senko Span A was moving, right? Look at how Senko Span A was moving. In this case, the first one, so I will just put this one first, second, third. Right, I will just put these numbers so that whenever you have any questions, you can mention about these numbers, right? And you know which one, which uh, which part you are asking. So okay, this is one, two, three, four, five. When Kumo is moving down, where, where Senko Span B becomes horizontal. And when you look at this one, number one, first of all, the Senko Span A was moving down, but gradually it actually kept going up this way, right? It switched to the upside. So when you see this movement, right, when you see the Senko Span B to be moving up and closer to this Senko Span B, we have to prepare for the twist, right? We have to pre prepare for the twist of the Kumo. So in this case, it eventually went down, so it didn't twist eventually, but uh, sometimes it goes actually backwards and sometimes it twists, so you have to prepare for that, right? And exactly when Kumo was twisting, or actually when, when Tenko Span A was moving up was here, right? So I will just go, um, I will just go um, 26 candles backwards from here and exactly which candlestick it was, was actually on this one, right? On this candlestick right here. So let me just mark it. So on this candlestick right here, uh, after the candle close right here, the Senko Span A was moving up this way, while Senko Span B was flat. So. This is another confirmation that when you see Senko Span A to be moving up in this candlestick, right, it might twist, right, the Kumo might twist to the upside. So that means the price might keep going up this way. There is, there are cases like this, right, when the Kumo, when Senko Span A goes backwards, then the price might go backwards too. So in this case, right, it went downwards because price actually keep, kept going down this way and broke the recent low even downwards. So actually Senko Span B was moving down too. But you can prepare, right? You can prepare for the retracement when Senko Span A moves upwards while Kumo is moving down. Okay, are we on the same page right now? Alright, let me just read some comments here and just drink some water 
more water here. All right. All right. So, so you know what I mean, right? I think this is pretty simple. Hi, Josh. Thank you for joining. All right. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Looks like you're excited, John. Uh, Josh. Sorry, Josh. All right. Marco, thank you for joining. All right. From Poland. All right. Yeah, actually, we've got uh, lots and lots of traders from Poland. And that's that's great. That's great. I wish I could go to Poland someday. All right. Uh, John, all right. Oh, you're from Indonesia. All right. That's great. That's great. You're studying Japanese. <laughs> you type Japanese. Great. Hikmat, thank you for joining. All right. And Merwin, good to see you too. All right. Hidekin, good to see you too. I noticed that this uh, thin Kumo gives a big momentum. The trend is stronger and visible. Thicker Kumo leads price to range. Is it true? Um, well, when Kumo is thick, that means that the trend is steady, right? When you see the bearish Kumo and when you see this Kumo to be thick, that means that this is continuously bearish. And whenever you see the Kumo is to be thick like this, uh, most likely the downtrend is quite strong in that case. So it might retrace backwards anytime soon, right? Whenever you see thick, uh, thin Kumo, the market might retrace backwards. But when you see the thick Kumo like this, uh, it shows that this is a stable bearish trend. Yeah. All right. Ego wa jōzu desu ne. All right. Thank you. Thank you for saying that, John. Yeah. Your Japanese is great too. <laughs> All right, Lakshai. Thank you for joining. All right. I bought Ura Dollar again today. I got a good daily setup on that. Sure. That's great. That's great. Yeah. This is Ura Dollar is currently going up. So basically, you can look for another buy chance right now. I am looking for buy chance too. All right, Marusan says yes, that's great. All right. Javad, thank you for joining too. All right. Maybe Ichimoku is spreading in Poland like coronavirus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, actually spreading is okay, right? Um, you can, uh, yeah, lots of people are int interested in Ichimoku in Poland. So that's great. That's great. That it's worldwide, right? Which I never expected actually, right? Uh, ever since, I start to upload Ichimoku videos and do lives like this. I just realized that you know many traders in the world are interested in Ichimoku, but this is something that I never expected before. I didn't know that Ichimoku is that famous in the world. <laughs> I thought it's only it's something that it's only in Japan. So yeah, I was I was pretty surprised, but I was actually uh, very happy to hear that. Uh, reactions at the same time and some people right uh, some people are very deep right deep and very um, you know good knowledge about Ichimoku and also other theories probably than Japanese traders <laughs> sometimes they know more than more knowledge than Japanese traders and that's great that's great because uh, most of the Japanese traders wouldn't know the Kyushu legs, right? Kyushu Ashi. Or they don't really use Renko Ashi either in Japan. So, yeah, I was just, I thought that it's, it's profound. It's profound. It's been a while since I was able to join a live. Missed two days of live for members. Cannot afford to miss another live. Sure, Josh, you can always replay the archives because everything is uploaded and saved in archive. And also you can join, right? You can join. Welcome. Welcome, John, for this live. All right, Optimus, sure, you can. Yeah, no problem. Even if you're late, it's okay. Welcome, welcome to my life. 
Thanks, great and simple explanation. I also use Ichimoku for my analysis. Great, great, John. Right, right? So, yeah, again, right, um, let's keep talking about this. So whenever you see, or the primary condition should be that Kumo should be going down this way, right? Kumo should be going down this way. And while Kumo is going down, Senko Span B sometimes becomes horizontal, right? Senko Span B becomes horizontal. And whenever Senko Span B becomes horizontal, you focus on Senko Span A. Right, you look at single span A, and sometimes it keeps going down like this number two, while single span B is flat. Single span A goes down this way, and in this case, when you see this setup, uh, you can be positive that the market keeps going down this way. But sometimes uh, single span A goes up like this part, or here too. More precisely. Um, yeah, it goes up exactly here, right? So whenever you see single span A is moving up this way, this is the deep um, retracement, right? So let me again just measure how many candles it was, right? 26 backwards is going to be exactly on this candlestick right here, right? On this one, we pointing downwards, right? So when you see this candlestick right here, single span A start to go up this way, right? So this is somewhere, right? That means that this is somewhere that you cannot really be positive to sell, right? Because the market might keep going up this way, and it gets closer and closer to Kumo, while single span B is flat. Okay, and moving on to the next example here. Single span B is flat while Kumo is moving down, and when you look at this single span A angle, right from here, it started to go up this way, right? And the Kumo is getting thinner and thinner here. So when you see this setup, right, exactly when single span A started to go up was going back 26 candles again, right? It's going to be from this candlestick right here. Right on this small one. Right, so on this small one, from here, the single span A started to go up. Right, so as you keep watching the market and as you look, keep looking at this single span A, you must have noticed that the single span A started to go up from here, from this candlestick onwards. Right, so when you see this, that means that the market is really retracing backwards this way. All right, because single span A at that time was moving gradually up here. So basically, you better wait for the single span A to be moving down or single span B to be moving down this way to actually place sell next time. Okay, and let's just take the final example here. Uh, on this fifth example, uh, single span B was flat, and when you look at this single span A, this is completely flat too, right? It was completely flat too. So that means both single span B, single span A are flat, and that means this is completely in the range, right? There was no direction in the market. And when exactly happened was, again, going back 26 candles before, it's going to be from exactly from this candlestick right here, right on this low, on this one. So from here, single span A became horizontal, right? And that means the market started to be consolidating like this way. Okay, so you can actually um, look at single span B itself and you can find that the market is actually retracing, right, sorry, the market is actually retracing and consolidating while it's moving down, right, while the uh, major trend is bearish. But if you can kind of combine with the single span A direction also, and whenever it goes up in this case, right, you know that the market might go uppers, right? Might, the market might go against the major trend. 
so you know how it plays out. <clears throat> okay, because because this is very important because eventually, right, if the senko span keeps going up this way, then eventually it will touch on this senko span B and it twists, right? It twists. And when it twists like this, right, it shows that this is the end of this bearish trend, right? It's the end of this bearish trend. And afterwards, you might consolidate, right? You might keep consolidate or it might uh, go switch to the upside again, right? We never know. We never know. But we are confirmed that when you see the Kumo twist here, that means that this bearish trend is now ended. So Senko span A direction is very important and I will take that as one of the checklists for you guys, All right? So Senko span A direction. I just put the memo here. So again, um, when you look at this Senko span direction, first, right, uh, the market should be on a trend, right? That means Kumo should be moving down in that case. Hold on. Yeah, the Kumo should be moving down in that case. Then Senko span A means a lot. That means a lot. So probably I will just so I will just start to create the checklist. Okay. And uh, first, mm, all right, so first you look at Kumo direction, Kumo direction, and um, yeah, within the Kumo you look at single span B and single span A direction. Hold on, let me make it bigger. And probably I have to find another good tool um, to, to actually create the memo like this. But uh, yeah, for now, I just use this one as a memo, like this way. So first, you look at the Kumo direction, right? Whether it's moving up or down or horizontal, right? You look at the Kumo, and you look at this Senko span B direction and also Senko span A direction, right? Let me just make it thicker, all right? And then also you look at the Kijun Sen, Kijun Sen direction, whether it's moving down or not in this case. And that's pretty much it, right? That's pretty much it to capture whether it's a downtrend or not. So to make it simple, you look at the Kumo direction. Whenever it's going down, it's bearish trend. And sometimes Senko Span B becomes horizontal. Some, some, sometimes it becomes downwards, right? So whenever it goes downwards, whenever Kumo is downwards, that's a downtrend. So you can be positive to sell, basically, right? But whenever you see Kumo is flat, then look at Senko Span A direction. Right, and when Senko span A is also moving down, that will be another confirmation to take sell at that time. But whenever it goes upwards like this, in this case, right, you have to hold. You have to hold because that means the market is retracing backwards, like this way, right? The market is retracing backwards. The market is retracing, right? Backwards like this way. Whenever you see um, single span A is uh, moving up this way. And last example, right? Whenever you see single span A is flat, that means market is flat, right? Market itself is flat. However, the major trend is still bearish, so we can look for the sell chance, right? And when exactly the next sell chance is going to be when single span B is moving down this way. Right, whenever single span B start to move down, that's exactly the way you can be positive to sell. Is it clear so far? So, yeah, again, I'm, more, I'm not going to be talking about all the detailed like uh, calculations and how, what Hane lines and all everything, right, about Ichimoku. Because in this public live, I will focus on how to take trades, right? How you can take trades and more um, practical examples.
And if you want to know more about Ichimoku from the basics and uh, you know from the history background and how you can actually take trades more precisely in Ichimoku, then I have a Ichimoku community in YouTube, right? YouTube community and also Discord. And I've created a Ichimoku Basic Master Book so you can join and get that book as one of the perks. So in this public life, you know, I will be talking about like this kind of uh, trade strategies based on Ichimoku. So it should be valuable to you too. All right. Can Akumo twist be only a correction and not a new trend? Yeah, it doesn't mean it's a new trend. Whenever you see Kumo twist, that only means that it's the end of the trend. Right? In this case, whenever you see the Kumo twist next time, that means that this is the end of the bearish trend. And it doesn't it doesn't really um, confirm you for the next new trend, new uptrend. Right? It doesn't confirm that. Hi Adam, thank you for joining from Poland. All right. Good to see you. Good to see you. All right. All right. We have very strong Ichimoku community in Poland. Very advanced. Sure. That's good. That's good. Yeah. That's great. Great to hear. Great to hear. So yeah, I ha I I heard that there are Ichimoku communities in many countries, in different countries. So yeah, it's great. It's great to be able to talk about Ichimoku within your community and especially mine too especially mine because uh, this is from Japan but I don't think uh, lots of Japanese will be joining on this one because this is in English <laughs> so anyways yeah because this is this is just welcome right I, I welcome everybody from all the, all over the world to join this community because uh, here right basically we talk about Ichimoku and um, you know I am from Japan I studied the Ichimoku from based on this original books here right in these original books of Ichimoku Kinko Hyo and based on this I created that uh, Ichimoku basic master book that you can get when you join as a member so yeah and we are very excited right uh, I am very excited to be able to you know create this kind of community and also be a part of uh, this uh, you know whole momentum here Ichimoku momentum it's awesome it's awesome all right how to differentiate between correction and new trend okay so exactly that's when you see the next uh, scenario right so right at the twist right just just by looking at the Kumo twist, you cannot really confirm whether it's going to be a new trend or not. So you have to have another information, right? Another confirmations like uh, Chikospan breakout or Tenkan Sen Kijun Sen. Gold cross that cross can be the ones, or a recent high low breakout would be one of the information that you can take uh, for the new trend. But Kumo twist itself does not ensure you for the new trend basically and especially when Kumo is flat it twists many times right you might already seen it before whenever Kumo is flat uh, it twists many many times and it gives you fake signals a lot so you have to be able to identify which twist is important which twist is not important and basically where, where it's important is like this, right? Uh, when Kumo is, has been moving down and when, when it twists the first time, it's very important. Because that shows this is the end of the downtrend. All right. We have that books, Ichimoku Sanji, four books, and one from Sasaki Hidenomo in Poland languages, but that cost. Uh, okay, wow, that's a lot <laughs> to translate only for uh, 200 person, but I have it and loved it. This book, sure, that's great, that's great. Yeah, Sasaki Hidenobu's book is already 
also good too. It's this one, right? Actually, he writes, Sasaki Hidenomo san writes a couple books, but I think you're mentioning about this one, right? And here he talks, he doesn't really talk about Ichimoku, uh, five lines, but he talks about uh, time theory, price theory, and also, um, yeah, and also weekly, weekly legs. And this is a great book too. And it's, it's great that you have, you have that translation in Poland. That's amazing. That's amazing. You must have a great translator there. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> All right. Ichimoku is popular in Vietnamese too. All right. I see everyone used to trade stocks. I'm lucky to learn this directly from you, a Japanese. Sure, sure. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. Um, yep. So if I'm, I'm just a newbie, right, if I'm just a newbie of Ichimoku, then I wouldn't be able to speak like this. But because I have already enough experience to talk about Forex market, and also because I have a uh, experience of uh, being independent uh, Forex trader, that's why I'm here to, you know, I'm ready to talk about Ichimoku too. The best source to learn Ichimoku is directly learned from Japanese trader. Um, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, great to hear that. Yeah, so I know there are great, great Ichimoku traders in the world. So, yeah, I admire their works too. But, uh, yeah, Japan is the original country. So, it's such a privilege for me too, right? To, you know, uh, share this kind of knowledge to everyone in the world. And you learn from it. It's great, it's great. Yeah, um, I was actually doing one-on-one -on -one session with uh, one of the guys who lives in Japan and I just took a small video, so I will be uploading that video on this main main uh, channel, probably. But uh, yeah, he also talks about Ichimoku and he's very enthusiastic about Ichimoku. So I was actually giving hands-on training to him. It was about like two hours and uh, yeah, I was really talking about Ichimoku and he li really liked it, right? He really liked the 101 training because, uh, yeah, he's he's like the same, right? He wants to study Ichimoku from a Japanese trader and he, because he was, he lives in Japan, he was looking for a trader who speaks Japanese, but unfortunately, uh, there are not many traders who speaks English in Japan. So that's why he contacted me and actually we met at uh, near Tokyo station today and I was giving him some lectures in Ichimoku. So yeah, yeah. So it was it's such a privilege for me, right? And I, I feel very honored to be able to share my knowledge of Ichimoku and also Forex market trading, right, to you in this way. It's it's a great it's a great opportunity for me too. Hi, thank you for joining. Although I cannot pronounce your name, thank you for joining. Right? I cannot I cannot read, sorry. <clears throat> Hi Muchu no san, thank you for joining. All right. Great, great. Yeah, thank you for joining after the job. It's great. You are very enthusiastic. That's great. <laughs> stay gold, stay gold. All right. All right, James, love Ichimoku. Thank you for using that stamp. <laughs> okay. Haike, do you think you can show examples of divergence trade with, with Ichimoku? Uh, probably I will show it to you uh, sometime later because it might be a little bit off topic today. Yeah, but I will talk about it sometime. Divergence trades with Ichimoku. <clears throat> Hi, Sadhira, thank you for joining. All right, and Mateus, yes sir, all right. Thank you so much, Kay. Your trading has helped me to start becoming more consistent in my trace sure that's great that's great so yeah just as a disclaimer you know uh you already know but um you know all everything that i talk is basically the educations right educational purposes so you, whenever you take trades you have to take uh trades at your own risks right i can advise you i can actually suggest you right what how to look at the market by ichimoku but I cannot really take responsibility, right, on your trace. 
in terms of the money. So, and yeah, I never ask someone to manage my own money. And also, I would never, um, you know, uh, help somebody, somebody's money to manage their own, right? Because I am here individual trader and I am running my own fund, my own equity. And that's what I have been. So, yeah, yeah. In that sense, I am, I have never be into the fund like hedge funds or like security firms right i have never been into those companies before but i am just an individual trader right i am just an individual trader who is actually full-time right meaning that this is the only job that i do right now the forex trading and i manage my own capital so if you are interested in the forex trading as a full time then maybe this will be the channel for you because here i am right i am actually managing my own equity by ichimoku and other tools every day all right assuming that we enter upon a single span b going down what will be the stop loss and targets yeah so single span b when you take the trade when single span b is going down that's exactly um, when you take sell, but uh, the, the target is going to be depending on the situation, right? Depending on the situation. So yeah, probably I will talk about that later, uh, about the, uh, the stop loss and target uh, strategies. I have the fixed Ichimoku book in it. Uh, oh, FX Ichimoku book in Japanese, the basic master book, learn it a lot from it. Sure, sure. All right. <clears throat> That's great, Hidekin. All right, Dewey san, stay gold. Sure, stay gold, Dewey. All right. And Devil, thank you for joining. All right. Thank you for joining. <clears throat> All right. Is that true that uh, Goichi Hosoda have seven books? Yeah. In total, there are seven books written by Goichi Hosoda. Yep. And four are in public you can purchase, and three are placed in the National Diet Library in Tokyo. All right, Matthew san you have to go. So, yeah, thank you for joining, and you can always come back later, right? Or you can join live tomorrow because I do lives every day. So, thank you for joining. All right. Hi, Trade with Ichimoku-san. Thank you for joining too. Good to see you. Good to see you again. I have Ichimoku Basic Masterbook here in the Netherlands from K. <laughs> sure, Jaren. Yep, you got the Ichimoku Basic Masterbook from myself as one of the perks. Sure, sure. And it's been revising. It's been revising. I am actually working on to uh, create the third version of that uh, basic master book so stay tuned for that all right <clears throat> would you consider the rollover of the senko span back to the downside a strong indication for a trend continuation yes that's true marusan and that's when exactly the ichimoku well actually when, that's when exactly kumo expands too so <clears throat> the reason why i ask you to focus on this uh, Senko Span A uh, rollback is because uh, it might be a twist of the Kumo, right? It might become a twist of the Kumo, and that's why you have to watch out. So, yeah, so let's just take a look at the market afterwards, what happened, right? So, afterwards, what happened was that the uh, it twisted, right? Eventually, it twisted here. And exactly when it twists, Senko Span A should go up like this way, right? Senko Span should go up this way and it gets closer to Senko Span B and it twists like this way, right? And that's why we have to watch out for this Senko Span A direction while Senko Span B becomes flat, right? So Senko Span B becomes flat, but Senko Span A can get closer and closer to Senko Span B. And we never know how far the Senko Span A rolls over like this way, right? So whenever it happens, right, whenever it goes upwards like this way, 
it's like the Bollinger Band squeeze, right? It's like a Bollinger Band squeeze. So basically, the market is actually charging its energy for the next move, and it might spike downwards, right? Like this way, it might spike downwards, but it might, you know, twist, right? The kum might twist, and it might go upwards like this way. In this case, right, the candlestick broke the kumo uppers. It was happening a little bit later after the twist here, but eventually it broke the kumo uppers, right? So whenever you see Senko Spana A to be going the opposite direction from the major bearish trend in this case, it might twist. The kumo might twist, so that's why you have to watch out for this Senko span A direction. All right, let me give you more examples here. So in this case, right, uh, when you look at this Senko span A direction, first of all, the Kumo should be going down or up, right? Whenever Kumo is flat, it doesn't apply. So just to make sure, right? So let's look for when the market is moving up. All right, so in this case too, right, you see that the Kumo has been moving up beautifully. Right, the Kumo has been moving up beautifully. And let me spot where Senko Span B is flat, first of all. Right, so Senko Span B was flat, like between here, right, in this area. And also, I will just take a couple of examples here, right, because I cannot really spot all the places where it's flat. So, yeah, probably I will just take the last one where it's becoming flat, like this way, right? Okay, so we've got like three situations where Senko Span B became flat while it's going up, right? While it's going up. So again, this is 26 candles afterwards. So we have to always go back 26 candles before to capture exactly when, it, when Senko Span B was moving flat. So moving 26 backwards, it's actually on this candlestick <clears throat> right here, right on this small one, right here. So yeah, let's just take this one as a second situation. This one is a first, right, and this one the third. Okay, so when you see this candlestick and after the after this candlestick when you see this one you notice that okay Senko Span B became flat now right <clears throat> and you keep watching the market while Senko Span B is flat when you look at this Senko Span A it keeps going up this way right it keeps going up, going up this way so basically in this case you can be positive that the market is still bullish in this way all right, and also at that time you look at this Kijun Sen too. And whenever Kijun Sen is moving up, you can also be confident that the market is still bullish, right? So this is buy, right? You can actually buy at this area when Senko Span A and also Kijun Sen at that time is moving up at the same time. All right, so let's take a look at this first example, right? And I will just do precisely, right? Uh, I will just go 26 bars backwards, and it's going to be on exactly on this candlestick right here. All right, so 26 mo ba moving backwards was from this candlestick, and when you see the next candlestick right here, you notice that the Senko Span B became flat here. So after this, right, after this, what happened was that Senko Span A was moving up this way, but after that, it gradually going down this way, right? Senko Span A gradually moved down like this way. So to be more precise, like in this area, Senko Span A was moving down while Senko Span B was flat, right? So this is exactly happened when there was a bearish momentum here, right? So in this case, right, uh, there's a chance that if the price keeps consolidating like this way, or when price breaks the Kumo downwards, the Kumo itself is going to twist like this way. 
right? So you know that this bullish Kumo is now ended. And this bullishness is now ended. When you see the Kumo twist eventually like this. Right? In this case, it didn't twist, but it actually kept going up this way. So it was a uh, bullish trend afterwards. But uh, when you see the you know, Tenko Span A going backwards like this way, uh, you have to prepare for the retracement, right? You have to prepare for the market to be moving down this way. And that's why you cannot really take buy when Senko Span A is moving down this way. All right? So this is the situation one. So I will just go slow because you might have some questions. And I know that there is some lag here, there is some delay between myself and you. So, yeah, I would just go slowly just to make sure everything's clear for you. Right, and in this case, so again, same cost span A was moving down and the price was moving down. But when you look at this Kijun Sen, it was moving up, right? So, yeah, um, in this case, um, you can actually still look for the buy chance because. Uh, Kijun Sen itself was moving up. But just remember that uh, whenever you see this uh, Senko Span A is moving down, it might be a retracement downwards. Okay. <clears throat> so, alright, moving on to the third situation right here. When you see the Senko Span B to be flat, here and going 26 candles backwards, it was exactly on uh, this candlestick right here, right? So exactly from this candlestick right here, the Senko Span B became flat. So after you've seen a couple of candles, probably like this way, right? You notice that okay, now Senko Span B is flat. Okay, and when you see that. When you see Senko Span A, it keeps going up this way, right? It keeps going up this way. So as long as you see Senko Span A to be moving up this way, you can still be positive to buy, right? Even if the price is actually going down, basically you can look for the buy chance, right? We can look for the pushback, right? The potential pushback like this way. Maybe you can uh, put the Fibonacci retracement and take buys accordingly, or you can Look at the lower time frames and look for the buy chance. <clears throat> because Senko Span A is moving up, and also in this case, Kijun Sen was moving up too, basically. <clears throat> However, if you look at, if you keep looking at, looking at the market, right, uh, when you keep looking at the market, the Senko Span A started to go down this way. Right, and exactly when it start to be moving down is again um, when I hold on. If I uh, count the candlesticks from here, exactly when single span A start to be moving down this way, and going back twenty six candles before, it was actually on this candlestick right here, this small one. Right. So after this candlestick, if you keep watching the market, right, although the price was gradually moving up this way, the Senko Span A was moving down this way, right? So this is somehow you can actually uh, look at it as a divergence, right? Uh, the price is actually moving up, but Senko Span A itself is actually moving down this way. So this is uh, one of the kinds of divergence that you can notice. So you can actually prepare for the retracement backwards this way. So and in that case, Kijun Sen is flat, right? Kijun Sen is flat, and Senko Span B is flat too, right? Senko Span B is also flat. So when both Kijun Sen and Senko Span B is flat, I have keep saying that you have to hold. You have to hold until 
uh, the ki uh, either Kijun Sen start to move up again or Senko Span B to be moving up again, right? Whenever you see Kijun Sen and um, <clears throat> Senko Span B to be flat, you have to hold. You have to hold. So that's exactly what you have to look at, right? So in this case, again, right, the price actually went upwards afterwards. After this single span A moving down, and after the retracement, right, the price actually spiked upwards this way. And this was actually due to the news of uh, the interest rate cut, right, in the US. So it was spiked upwards, right, eventually. So, yeah, basically, um, due to the news, the price actually broke the recent high uppers on the weak pointing uppers right here. So, actually, it pushed all the market moving uppers this way. So, yeah, yeah, this is how you can actually look at Senko Span A for your consideration. All right. Hi, Kay. Any advice on growing a small account? Um, you should risk. You should uh, manage your own risk when you take a small account. Yeah, and also you have to have two wallets. Usually, I say you have to have two wallets. Like uh, you have to have the wallet to live, and also the wallet to take trades. But whenever you, s you have the small account to take trades, you have to limit the risk, basically. Ideally, you have to have 2% risk every time you take positions. 2% of your whole equity. Greetings from Brazil, all right. Good to see you, Andre, from Brazil, all right. Hope you're doing well. I really enjoy listening to you. Sure, thank you. All right. <clears throat> I said, yeah, I saw you just became a new member. So make sure that you download the Ichimoku Basic Master Book and make sure to join the Discord. All right, said, welcome, welcome to uh, Ichimoku membership. All right, stay gold, said. All right. Okay, would you explain the fakey patterns in the video? Uh, actually, I have talked about the fakey patterns, the fake patterns in the video. So yeah, and I will keep talking about it uh, on my live streams too. Yep. Pound yen on one hour time frame has the Senko Span B flat right now. Is it still good to sell? Uh, when Senko Span B is flat, then which way the Senko Span A is moving, right? And also which way the Kijun Sen is moving is a question, John. So, yeah, and yeah, I can actually open up the pound yen and I can just explain to you right now. But instead of doing that, I want you to think about it by yourself first and come up with your own answer first because that's what really makes people grow, right? You have to think about, you know, the, the tradings and also the analysis by yourself. Then uh, you can actually ask me, right, the questions. And yeah, this is also what I usually do too. But when you think it's a sell, then you have to have the reason and the confirmations, right? Why you think you think it's sell, right? Why you think it's sell? Why you think it's buy, right? Don't just say that you get the voice, <laughs> right? Don't just say that your in instinct says that, right? Don't say like, things like that. But you have to have the reason based on the chart or analysis or indicators or price actions, whatever. And you're good, you're good. Okay, so yeah, so I hope you have a little bit of a more good understanding about Senko Span A now, because I haven't really touched on this Senko Span A so far. So yeah, like this, right? Uh, whenever you see Kijun Sen, sorry, uh, Senko Span B to be flat, when you see Senko Span A to be 
moving down this way, right, eventually, right, eventually senko span B and senko span A comes close, right, and it twists to the upside, right. Um, senko span A will not go flat, right. So senko span A flat and senko span B gets closer to senko span A, right? It doesn't really happen, right? This is very rare case. This is senko span A and this is senko span B, right? This is very rare, very rare. So what you can expect is that um, either senko span A becomes, right, becomes go going down and senko span B also gets closer to senko span A and it twists, right? Or um, when senko span B becomes flat and, sorry, hold on, let me just write it here. When senko span B is flat and senko span A gets closer and closer to senko span B and it, it twists, right? These are two common patterns, right? This is very common and this is also very common. But this is unlikely, right? This is unlikely. <clears throat> so that's why whenever single span B goes downwards, you have to be careful, right? You have to be careful and you have to be prepared for the twist, Kumo twist, right? Because this is going against the major trend and it might twist, right? That the uptrend might end or downtrend might end at that time. All right. When you have buy position on this EU, uh, where will be the target uh, since it's sell on weekly chart things? Well, actually, I am actually on the buy bias now. So I am looking for the buy right now. Andrew, yep, because it just broke the descending trend line of the weekly uppers. So I am actually buy bias now. Uh, from yesterday, it was sell biased, but now the price broke the line uppers. So and also the recent high uppers. So this is now becoming bullish. Okay, so these are the three main uh, important parts about single swan B and A, right? So this is A, this is B, right? And this is A and this is B, all right? So, yeah, single span A should go backwards when single span B comes close to single span A, right? Single span A never becomes flat and single span B comes closer to single span A, right? It's not likely. <clears throat> All right, so yeah, and uh, when you look at the chart right now, right, um, uh, single span B is flat, right? Single span B just became flat, but single span A is actually moving upwards like this way, right? And also Kijun Sen is um, technically flat right now. So as long as Senko Span A is going up, right, we can actually be positive to buy. We can be positive to buy in this case, right? But let's say Senko Span A is moving down this way while Senko Span B is flat, right? This is when you have to hold, right? Because it might retrace. Right, the market might retrace backwards when single span A is moving down, while single span B is flat. All right, clear enough. All right, so finally, let's just take a look at the pound yen. All right, and one hour chart. Okay, John says single span B is flat, so let's. Let's think about this for a moment right now, all right? So, yeah, let me ask you a question, right? Let me just make sure that everybody's here, 
right? And everybody's listening to my words, okay? So, I will just ask you an open question. So, is this downtrend, uptrend, or range? Right, which one is it, do you think? All right, is this moving up, down, or range? So we're looking at the pound yen one hour chart. <laughs> and also you can actually mention about this Senko Span B too. Right? You can actually mention about Senko Span B and how it's been moving right now. All right, all right. Okay, down, down. It's down, all right, all right, it's down. <clears throat> all right, look at the angle of the Kumo right now. And also you can look at the Kijun Sen too. Okay, down, 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 down trend ranging. Okay, okay, all right, down, down, okay. B is flat and A is down, right, right. Senko span B is flat and Senko span A is right now moving down. Yep. That's right, that's right. So, yeah, everybody's right, right, everybody's right. So, this is downtrend. Right, this is downtrend because Kumo is right now moving down this way. Right, when you look at the price action too, it's been moving down. Right, it just broke the recent low downwards. Right, it just broke the recent low downwards. Now it's coming back up. Right, but uh, this is still downtrend unless the price breaks the recent high upwards here. Right, to me, this is still reverse end wave. Right. This is one end wave and two end wave, and this is now third end wave and creating the fourth end wave, looking like this way. So, yeah, I can see that this is still downtrend unless the price breaks this recent high uppers here. All right. So, and you look at this single span B, right, and it's flat. Right, and it's flat. But look at the Senko Span A. Right, when you look at the Senko Span A, this is still moving down, right? And the Kumo is getting thicker and thicker here. Right, the Kumo is thicker now. So that means that this bearish momentum is still continuous. Right, this is still continuous. And also, if you remember what I've said earlier in January, uh, the lows. The distance between lows, right, this low to the Kumo is still wide, right? The distance between this low to the Kumo is still wide. So this also confirms that this is still continuous bearishness, right? Still bearish trend. All right, down. Senko span B is flat and Senko span is down. Kijun Sen going down, so good for sell positions, right? Yep. Yeah, I would look for the sell chance in this case still. Even if it's retracing backwards, right, this way, it might be resisted somewhere and it keeps going down this way, right? Unless the price breaks it upwards. If it goes upwards, then I might be, it might be doubtful for this continuous bearishness. But as long as it doesn't renew the recent high and it keeps going downwards, this is still a bearish, bearish trend. All right, trade with Ichimoku san says it's range. All right, down but retracement. Okay, single span B is flat, even though Kijun Sen looks like it's slightly pointing down. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, um, right, technically, right, the downtrend just started again after the twist of the Kumo here. Right, it just started to be moving down. And the Kumo itself is still young, right? And this is still short. 
So it might not be so reliable as a previous big Kumo like this way, right? Because after twist, this is too young and small. So this is just like a newborn baby, right? Newborn uh, bearish Kumo baby. And we have to watch if this guy keeps growing or not. And if it doesn't, right, if it doesn't keep growing, but instead if single span A twists backwards and single span B remains flat or some, some, somehow it comes close to single span A and it twists, then this is the end of this bearish trend, right? It's the end of this bearish trend. This is the end of this guy, all right? So another uh, newborn of the bullish baby is born in this case. So we, we have to watch out if this newborn bearish Kumo is going to be continuous or not. And you can actually keep watching this Senko Span A. And as long as Senko Span A points downwards, it should be growing, right? It should be keep growing like this way. And that's why Senko Span A direction is very important, right? So when, when you see Senko Span A to be moving backwards like this way, then you have to stop up thinking about setting it. Right now it's okay because single spine is moving down. You can actually look for the sell chance. Single spine B flat, single spine A down, Kijun Sense down. Yes, that's right, that's right. Just need the edge on the market on pound yen. Yeah, yeah. So right now it looks like it's been resisted by this Kijun Sen here. So, yeah, it might be a little bit significant. And also, I can see that there's a range, right? There's a fractal here, right? Former supports in this area. So, it might be resisted a couple of times in this area, and the market might twist downwards by the price action. And it actually matches with this Kijun Sen too. So it might be resisted by this area and keeps going down this way. So this is one hour chart, right? So that means that this candle is going to be closed in, in about 40 minutes. So we can actually come back to this chart after 40 minutes. And if the closing price is going to be below these candles, right? And if there is a wick pointing upwards as a result, then you can think about selling it, right, after 40 minutes later. Hi from Vietnam, all right, good to see you Tuan, all right. Welcome, welcome to my live. Kijun Sen is close to the price, so the pullback will not be strong. Okay, Kijun Sen is close to the price, so the pullback not gonna be so strong. Also, selling is wrong since price below the Kumo. Is those st statement true? So when Kijun Sen, right? You mean Kijun Sen, right? Yeah, yeah. Kijun Sen is close to the price, so the pullback, pullback um, will not be strong. Well, the price might be. Resisted by this Kijun Sen, it, it can go, keep going down this way. And it happens. It happens a lot in the market. So as long as the price is below Kumo, and when you see Kijun Sen, right, when you when the price reacts react to this Kijun Sen, then it might be a great sell chance. So yeah, again, uh, you have to combine with all these you know, uh, lines, right? And also you can take this uh, trend line too, right? You can draw a trend line like this way. And whenever the price reacts to this trend line, you can look for the sell, right? Right now, looks like it's breaking upwards, but we have to wait for the candle close. And if it ends up with within this uh, downtrend line, then you can we can still look for the sell from here because the market might keep going down this way. All right. Mm. 
all right hi aki thank you for joining all right new here welcome welcome to my life all right i need to detect a trend but i want to know when how and where to take trades so i just said it right i just said it so this is where you can take trades after the candle close when it ends up with this week pointing upwards and when it starts to go down this is where you can sell all right and also in that case senko span a should be keep going down this way right and also kijun sen should be pointing down this way and you can be positive more positive to sell in that case and eventually senko span b will follow right senko span b will be pointing downwards too in that case <clears throat> So yeah, this is something that we can watch out for the next move. And if it goes upwards, right, this is a case when the price keeps going down. But if the price keeps going up and if it breaks the recent high upwards here, right, the scenario should be changed, right? The scenario should be changed. It might become into the range still. If the price breaks the recent high uppers, right? It's going to be no more downtrend. So we have to prepare for the range from here, right? And in that case, eventually Kumo, single span A should be pointing upwards first, and then Kumo should twist to the new bullish Kumo at some point. All right, so creating two scenarios is very important, right? You can create a scenario to sell, but when it goes upwards, you have to think about that too. All right. <clears throat> All right, so I'm getting hungry a little bit now. I ate a little bit uh, before the live, but now I'm getting hungry. <laughs> All right, but because uh, this is already in the midnight, about uh, zero uh, thirty a.m. in Japan, probably I will just have some quick something and just go to bed afterwards. What if in a downtrend a candle has closed upwards, the fast moving line? What if in a downtrend candle has closed upwards the fast moving line, but it's re uh, retracing, right, uh, to slow moving line? What does that mean? So what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, can you type your question more precisely? So you're talking about this Kijun Sen as the slower moving line and also this Tenkan Sen as the fast moving line, is that what you're asking? So yeah, whenever the price is below these lines, this is a bearish trend, right? This is a bearish trend. So right now it's actually touching this Kijun Sen. So this is where we have to be careful, right? We have to wait. Basically, in this case, we have to wait if the close price is going to be ending up with above or below these uh, these lines. All right. Okay, can you take a look at the monthly chart on pound JP? To me, Ichimoku in is in correct source order and Senko Span B is pointing down, but it's almost a mirror of the one hour chart. All right, sure. So let's take a look at the monthly chart. All right, so this is a monthly chart. All right, so in this case, right, single span B is pointing down right now. Single span B is down. And a single span A is flat, right? So 
So to me, that just gives us uh, evidence that the short bias is correct on pound yen. Um, yeah, so based on this monthly chart, this is more towards bearish side. Yeah, this is more towards bearish side. But actually, when you look at the Kumo itself, this is horizontal, right? Horizontal. Price action wise, the highs are getting lower and lower, right? And also, the lows are about the equal line here. So, this is more towards the uh, bearish bearish momentum so in price action wise this is bearish but when you look at this kumo itself this is horizontal right so monthly chart uh, i cannot really think that this is the bearish i mean uh, there is no trend in the market based on the monthly chart in terms of uh, ichimoku uh, techni technicals price action wise this is downtrend But Kumo itself is flat, right? Kumo itself is flat. Previously, it was moving down. So this was a down Kumo. But right now, yeah, this is just gradual, right? Single span A is moving down. But single span B remains relatively flat. So this is very weak downtrend to me. The downtrend is very weak. Yeah. I mean, if the trend is in downtrend, but one candle has closed above the Tenkan Sen and is reacting to Kijun Sen slow moving, what does that mean? Okay, that means that the market is actually um, uh, working, right? The market is moving according to uh, Kijun Sen cycle, right? Kijun Sen cycle. So Kijun Sen is actually the midterm market momentum. So when price breaks the Tenkan Sen upwards but stopped by the Kijun Sen, that means that the market is bearish in midterm based on the Kijun Sen cycle. All right. So monthly chart looks like to me this is very weak bearish trend and let's just in case look at the weekly chart all right so in this weekly chart this is completely flat right kumo is like going nowhere right now it's completely flat single span b is flat single span a is also moving up and down like this way so there is no direction in the market right now in this weekly chart but one thing that i just noticed is that uh bollinger bands is squeezing the Bollinger Band squeezing right now, so it looks like the market is uh, has charged the energy for the next move. It might move down or up in this case. But we never know which way the market's gonna go because basically Kumo is flat, right? Single span A, single span B is like moving up and down right now. Yeah, pound yen has been quite difficult to take trades in this case. And in the daily chart, um, it spiked down, broke the recent low downwards twice, once here and twice here, right? And it keeps going down this way. So, yeah, looks like this is bearish. Right now it's consolidating. So we have to find the next, con next confirmation for the new bearish trend. And one of the things is that you can actually look for the breakout of the recent low. But in terms of Ichimoku right now, the Kumo is like a thread, right? The Kumo is just like a thread. So this bearish momentum is too strong, right? It's quite strong that it might retrace backwards anytime. Um, yeah, and there is no sign of Gyakuten signal, right, in this case. Uh, Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen, dead cross here, and Chikosan break was happening here, 
and Kumo, uh, Kumo breakout was happening exactly in here. So this is not in the right order of sign Gyakuten signal. So this breakout is not really trustable. So, so yeah, that means that there is still a chance that it might retrace backwards to some level. Right in Fibonacci, probably it's going to be retracing up to 23.6 or you know any of these numbers. It might retrace backwards. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, this strategy is actually works uh, in 5 minutes too. But in 5 minutes or smaller time frames, you've got many noise, so it might not going to be so clear to apply. But basically, market is fractal in any time frame, so it can apply in any time frames. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. I have a question. As far as I am following you, I think you have taught almost everything in your free on YouTube video that a noob can ta trade easily. Okay. <laughs> well, um, yeah, maybe, maybe. It's not everything, right? It's just the tip uh, of the tip of the iceberg still. But I have seen you have a membership. What benefit it has? All right, you get the. Ichimoku basic master book as one of the perks, right? So you can fully understand Ichimoku more deeply. And also I do uh, three uh, lives, right? Three membership live every week based on each chapters. So I go each lines, right? I go Tenkan Sen and Kijun Sen and Chikou Span and Senko Span A, B and the combinations, right? And also the concept behind Ichimoku theories. So I take I talk more deeply about Ichimoku and how you can actually take advantage of it, right? Because in this public life, I keep saying about how you can take trades, but this is just a surface, right? This is just a surface, so, and it depends. It depending on the situation. So, in this case, right, in this case, because the Kumo is like a thread and it keeps going down this way, right, it might recess backwards, right? You might know already because I said it and this is not in the right order, right? But what if this is in the right order, right? What you can do? And these kind of things, right? These kind of more applied Ichimoku theories, that's something that I teach within the membership life. So that's a difference, right? So again, in this public life, I keep talking about how you can take trades in my view about the market based on Ichimoku and Bollinger Bands. And basically, I start with Euro Dollar. Yeah, and also there's a Discord within the Ichimoku membership. So when you join as an Ichimoku membership, uh, you can actually interact with other Ichimokers, right? Ichimoku traders. And also you can see all the analysis in there. I post my own analysis, Ichimoku analysis in the Discord. And also other members are posting the Ichimoku analysis too, so that you can also learn from others too. All right, trade with, Ichi with Ichimoku Sensei. So would you say that because the monthly is showing range, the chance of profit by selling on that lower time frames will be less? Um, yeah, so coming back to the monthly chart, right? <clears throat> so monthly chart is gradually moving down. So whenever you look at the lower time frames, you can actually look for the sell in this case. Yeah, but yeah, again, the chance for chance for to be profitable might be a little less, right? A little less because this momentum is not so strong, right? This bearish momentum is not so strong. So that means it might consolidate here a couple more months for the next move. So right now, it looks like this is going down, but we never know when it's going backwards. Right, because basically Kumo's flat, right? Unlike the previous Kumo, like here, 
right now Kumo is flat. Senko span A is flat too. So that means that the market might keep going up and down within the range, like this way. So in that sense, uh, based on that monthly chart, it might not gonna be so profitable if you're taking swing. Yeah, that's my last question for now. Okay, sure. <laughs> Alright, trade with the Ichimoku-san, sure. Alright. A helpful way to find good buy or sell zones is using horizontal volume with Ichimoku. Horizontal volume with Ichimoku, okay. Um, I have never used the volume, so I'm not quite sure how it goes along with Ichimoku. So, yeah, maybe you can show it to me, right? You can write me an email and show it to me how you take trades with uh, the combination of volume and Ichimoku. Then probably I can uh, backtest for that. All right, so probably I will end the live stream for now because I am getting hungry. And also it's going to be well over one and a half hour now. Okay, so let's just come back to your daughter and how it's moving right now. Looks like it's still going up. All right, now it's retracing backwards. So yeah, I am still looking for the buy on this one, but uh, because this is Friday, usually I don't take positions over the weekend. So probably if I don't have any chance, or even if I take buy, but if I don't have any profit more than like 20 or 30 pips, then I might close it and just prepare for the next week trades. Alright, so again, thank you everyone for joining on my live. I hope you enjoyed my analysis and I will be keep doing this kind of live stream tomorrow and the day after on Sunday too. So tomorrow I will be talking about the Ichimoku Forex forecast for upcoming week, next week. I will talk about all the currency pairs and also fundamental news uh, quickly based on the daily chart tomorrow at the same time. So if you can join that, that would be great too. And also tomorrow I will be having another membership live too. And I will start talking about chapter 6 which is Kijun Sen. So you can be uh, ready for that, right? Make sure to read chapter 6 for those who are members and I will see you on the membership live too. So you have a great great weekend and if you liked today's live please press a good button before you leave so that it keeps me going. And also if you haven't subscribed please subscribe and hit the bell so that you get notified whenever you see the new video coming and also the notification for my future lives every day basically all right so yep stay gold and have a great weekend everyone all right bye for now matane